Today we will be discussing hemodynamic monitoring in the ICU and we will do it in two parts. The first part will cover some of the basics and we will do some of the more advanced hemodynamic monitoring in the second part. So in this section we will try and introduce the cons components of hemodynamic monitoring. We will understand how invasive arterial pressure monitoring works, the transducing system. We will try to understand concepts of the preload including CVP, pulmonary artery occlusion pressure and the limitations. We will talk about preload responsiveness and the use of echocardiography in hemodynamic monitoring. So we will start off with a case. So this is a 55 year old man with a previous history of leukemia. He comes in with respiratory distress. His respiratory rate is 34 per minute. He is severely uh, high temperature. He has got a tachycardia of 140 beats per minute. His blood pressure is low. His abdomen is tender, firm and distended. He has got a white cell count is raised to 24,000. He is oliguric and his serum creatinine is, is 1.5 milligrams per deciliter. So the question would be asked is, is this patient in shock? Now, when we talk of shock, we define shock as a life-threatening generalized form of acute circulatory failure associated with inadequate oxygen utilization by the cells. And typically, we identify shock by hypoperfusion and the signs of hypoperfusion are identified from three windows. One clinical window is the skin, that is a peripheral window. So classically, a patient will have cold, clammy skin with, perf with perspiration and so on. The second window is the renal window, where the urine output is decreased to less than half ml per kilo per hour. And the third is a neurological window with altered mentation. It is also a very, very essential to note that hypoperfusion is the key. A low blood pressure, while very commonly seen in shock, is not a prerequisite for the diagnosis of shock. And it is possible to have severe shock and hypoperfusion with a normal or a just slightly low blood pressure. If we know if that mean arterial pressure is a product of the cardiac output and the vascular resistance, and it is possible to have circumstances where the mean arterial pressure is maintained in the presence of a low cardiac output by a high systemic vascular resistance, which is severe vasoconstriction. So you can have a patient who is severely vasoconstricted with a low cardiac output, but a relatively normal blood pressure. But if this patient has signs of hypoperfusion, he is definitely, you have to diagnose and treat it as a shock. Now, while we look at the mean arterial pressure, we know that we have to manipulate the cardiac output and the vascular resistance in order to treat the hemodynamic derangement. And